What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla stock, what's going on with SPY, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. Break down some very important levels to watch for, what's going on with the data that just came out for PPI and initial jobless claims. And also, what's happening with more news about the markets in Tesla. But before I break any double information, before I talk about what the trust is suggesting for the pre market, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very soon in just two and a half weeks. Anyways, now let's break down what's happening with Tesla. Tesla's in a very, very interesting place as we're seeing an attempt for it to push a little bit higher as PPI and initial jobless claims came out. And also for SPY, we're seeing something very similar. SPY is also trying to push higher as we're seeing buyers stepping in and trying to defend it. So we're seeing uh, kind of like an opposite reaction of what we saw during the CPI reports. And we're starting to see buyers defending this market. So I want to break down more details about this over the next couple of minutes. But first, let's talk about what's happening with the charts. Then I'm going to break down news about Tesla. So Today is Thursday, April 11th. We had two main pieces of data coming out. We had initial jobless claims, not to mention the PPI report. So let's go over PPI first before I break down initial jobless claims. Looking at PPI year over year, we had 2.1%. That is aligned with expectations, which is kind of good for the markets. This is a forward-looking indicator for CPI, which suggests that the next CPI might not be as hot. This is a little bit more positive for the markets thus far. Then for core PPI, this was also at 2.4%, a little bit above expectations. The expectation was above uh, around like 23 to 2.1%. So core was a little hot, but all items PPI was as expected, technically speaking. And then for month over month, core was aligned with expectations right over here at 0.2%. And then month over month PPI, was at 0.2%. This was also below expectations. So overall, most of what I would say from PPI was aligned with expectations besides core year over year being a little bit hot. Besides that, everything else was close to expectations if not aligned. And that's not too bad. And then for, excuse me, initial jobless claims, this was at technically speaking around 211,000, a little bit below expectations, showing less pain in the jobs market, showing more strength. If anything, this is quite decent for the market. Uh, continuing jobless claims was also above the forecast, so it's still technically fueling the soft landing narrative. Now, as time goes on, okay, we have Williams giving a speech at 8.45 a.m. I think that the speech has already started. And then after that, we have some bill auctions coming out at 11.30 a.m. Collins giving a speech and then more data coming out later on. I'll talk more about that later on, too. And also, Bostic is giving a speech. So that's all we're seeing for the market for now. The main pieces of data are out, and so far the market has a positive reaction. As of right now, looking at how things are looking, we got a big drop yesterday after CPI came out. So the market is attempting to make a little recovery. We have a bunch of Fed speakers coming out so far, and we just got the FOMC minutes report, which wasn't too crazy. Uh, the Fed still has plans to cut rates again, but we'll have to wait and see if they maintain this uh, schedule, depending on more data that comes out. There's also some news that Amazon CEO Andy uh jassy he's come out he's releasing his annual shareholder letter which is saying that he's committed to cutting more costs even as the company keeps investing in new growth such as ai so it's good news for them besides that the department store macy's has sold a proxy fight with a real estate investor art house it's going to add two art house nominees to its 15 person board so some very very <coughs> excuse me interesting things right now and something worth noting as far as Tesla goes, we have some interesting news that's come out. Tesla's launches, Tesla has launched its second cheapest, longest range Model Y in many different European countries. And you guys can see right over here, we have the Model Y RWD. So this is going to allow for a maximum range that allows them to commute without charging. You guys can see all the different specs right here that came out. So that's a big improvement by Tesla. Which countries? It says it right over here. They're going to be launching this uh, in new ones, if anything, for orders in Austria, uh, Czech Republic, not to mention Denmark, Finland, Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the list goes on, and many other European countries. This one specifically is not offered in countries like the UK and the Netherlands as of writing. So that's some big news that has come out. It's going to cost about $52,000. Uh, that's the starting price, as it's the second most affordable variant, if anything. And that's going to be very, very interesting. They also have a dual motor AWD version. So very, very cool stuff so far. 
uh, very, very awesome for Tesla. And this is going to help them get more sales. Additionally, Tesla's big sales drop might not be the last one, according to many different analysts of Piper Sandler and other places like that. I already talked about what Piper Sandler said. We also have Jeffrey's analyst saying the same thing, that Tesla could be looking for less sales throughout the year, as we're still seeing this making all the headlines. Uh, these big analysts are expecting about 1.77 million deliveries throughout the year. Uh, that's about a 3% decline from before. So with these big changes in estimates, it's not the best news for Tesla. Uh, that's how, how the news is still kind of mixed. The Tesla strikes in Sweden are dragging on. And they've doubled down, but Musk has said that the storm has passed and things are not as extreme nowadays. Uh, but if anything, do not forget that uh, many of these unions are still continuing in Scandinavia. They're still continuing with the pro protests and that's not over for now. And then don't forget about the main headline. I talked about this yesterday already. I just wanted to briefly mention this. Musk is going to be meeting Modi in India in just a couple of weeks. So that's good news for India and also Tesla. So with that being said, let's talk about what's happening with the charts. What do I see kind of like developing so far? So for Tesla, I am a little bit concerned about this possible head and shoulders like structure that could be developing right here. If Tesla does push a little higher towards 175 and rejects, we could be forming a head and shoulders, but I'm not going to promise that for now. As of right now, Tesla's attempting to push to 173. I'm going to watch and see what the reaction is if we break through this, look for 175, and see if we form a head and shoulders or not. If we get a rejection, start turning back down, there could be a move back down to the downside later on. But for now, don't worry about that. Let's just see where Tesla ends up getting a rejection if it does reject. Could push a little higher, though. Spy could help us push to at least 175 and watch and see what the reaction is as we attempt to break higher. So as of right now, it's trying to push higher with the markets, but we'll see what the reaction ends up being. Watch 175 is resistance, 177.6. We have 170.5 as support. Let's mention 173.8. Tesla could attempt to push higher, but watch and see the reaction if we get a rejection or not. That's going to be key for the stock. For Spy, it's barely at 515's resistance. If you break this, watch 516.15. If that breaks, watch 517.5, followed by 518. And if that breaks, watch 520. For support, watch 514.5. If we lose that, we could be sinking all the way back down towards 513.5 and then 512. Overall, it's looking to me like there's a big bar forming. There is potential for this to go a little bit higher, trying to break past 515 or even above that. So we're going to be watching to see if Spy can attempt to push a little higher from here. As of right now, we're going to be watching to see what, what the move is. But I do see some potential in Spy to push higher. We're going to be watching our 50 EMAs resistance. I think that there is potential for it to go a little bit higher for now. So watch and see buyers stepping in. If they can try to defend their positions and try to get us up above uh, 516 for now. For the QQQ, same thing as SPY. It looks to me like it's going to try to push higher, especially thanks to NVIDIA. Uh, it's going to be looking at 440's resistance. If you break this, look for a test of 441.2, 442, and then eventually 444. For support, make sure you watch and see if we can try to hold above 439.5. If we lose 439.5 to 50 EMA, we're going to be coming back down towards 438, in my personal opinion. If that fails, watch 436. As right now, looks like it's trying to push. It's going to be looking for a move to 441.2, then 442. It looks a bit more bullish to me so far. For NVIDIA, it's trying to push up higher. In my video yesterday, I said, technically speaking, it looks a bit more bullish, but this also depends on PPI. Because PPI has been decent, and so were initial jobless claims. Uh, NVIDIA is pushing a bit, so I'm going to be looking for a test of about 884. 884 followed by 885, that range could be tested. As this is looking a bit more symmetrical, and this could help the QQQ push. So it tries to look a little bit more bullish. Apple's also looking, in my opinion... Uh, very, very interesting. It is attempting to rebound a bit. Watch the 50 EMA 168.7 as resistance. As it's trying to break through this, we could make an attempt to get back up to 170 if we break past 169. So I'm going to be looking for a little push attempt on Apple and see how things go from there. But that being said, the market is trying to rebound. Tesla could also try to push higher. Make sure you watch this resistance at, at our EMAs and see how it reacts. And be mindful of the possibility possibility excuse me that there could be a head and shoulders on tesla so it could push higher but make sure you watch resistance just to see the reaction it doesn't have to reject to come back down to form it it's just a possibility a right shoulder could be forming but we have to see if tesla could try to break past 175 to try to invalidate that and give it a little bit more time all right so for now it's pushing let's see how tesla ends up topping and we'll give this all the time it needs thank you for listening have a great day and i'll see you guys in just a couple of hours thank you and peace out